Rub up your engines! Petey says, what can I do from keeping my wife's 2014 CX-9 motor from self-destructing? We plan on getting rid of it in a year or two. Should we get an extended warranty on it? Well, change the oil regularly on that thing. I would change it every three to 4,000 miles because those engines are weak engines. And never overheat it. Make sure that the cooling system's working great. Here's the problem with getting an extended warranty. It's an insurance policy. And whether something's covered or not, it's the insurance company's choice. I just talked to a person who had an extended warranty and their engine went out. And you know what the warranty company said? They said, oh, that's a pre-existing condition. Before you bought the warranty, we're not going to put an engine in the car. And how are they do the same thing with you if the engine blew up? And now, most of those extended warranty things are total scams. You don't want to mess around with that stuff. It's an insurance company, you know, and they decide what's covered and what isn't. And if you read the fine print, you're going to need a mechanic slash lawyer. The mechanic would have to explain what the mechanical stuff is, and a lawyer would have to explain what the lawyer language is in the thing. They're jokes. Don't, don't waste your time you know just take care of it and do get rid of it within a year or two if you're gonna get rid of it you know you're not gonna get much for it anyways because nobody wants those things the resale value is garbage I've had people buy those things used and then the engine would blow up on them and I'm like why did you buy it you should have asked me first I would say do not buy one of those used you can buy them new if you don't mind the price and the money they lose or lease one but you know buying one used is a big mistake Vincent Fantosi says how do you feel about the BMW S85 V10 engine well they're great engines BMW BMW has always made great engines. They made engines for the Germans in World War II that were solid, giant. They made them for planes. They made them for tanks. They made them for all kinds of stuff. And they are excellent engines. It's the rest of the vehicle and all the plastic crap they put them on these today that you have problems with. But the actual engines themselves are excellently designed engines. Same thing with Mercedes. Most of their engines are really well-built engines, at least the ones made in Germany. Not the ones that are made in other parts of the world, not so much, but in Germany, they're, they're solid engines. It's the rest of the vehicles and the extended maintenance that you need as they age. You know, they put too much fancy stuff on the ones they sell in the United States, where in Europe, hey, I mean, they got four-cylinder diesels. They got taxi cab ones. They got, I saw an ice cream truck in England. It was a Mercedes. I mean, they can last a long time. It's that you had too much fancy stuff, then the rest of the vehicle isn't reliable, even if the engine was. You're not sitting on top of the engine driving it. You got a bunch of other stuff that goes wrong. <laughs> Like a rot too, says my lease on my Equinox is almost up. Thoughts on leasing a 2019 UX or an NX hybrid instead? Hey, lease an NX hybrid. Have some fun. You're leasing. I mean, you're a smart person, obviously, because you just leased and did not buy it. Buying it would have been a very bad decision, but you just leased it. So, la-di-da. I tell people, you know, you got to get a certain vehicle. Like, oh, you want to have a Porsche or Jaguar or something. Lease it. Because <laughs> then you don't own it, and you're not going to lose all that resale value. If you don't mind the payment, go ahead and lease it and have some fun with it. That's what I tell people. No, I personally would never lease a car because I wouldn't want to waste that kind of money. You will spend more money... You probably spent more money leasing that Equinox that I spent on every car in my life that I bought for my personal self to drive around in. I've been driving cars for 51 years. That's every car I've ever owned. Not including my wife's cars that I got for her, used. If you don't mind spending the lease payment for any vehicle, go ahead and do it and drive it. Then you're not stuck with it. As it falls apart as it ages. Especially a hybrid. They're really expensive to fix as they age. Pike Perch. What do you think of a Saab 9.5 2.3T? That's one of the the cars that led to the downfall of Saab going bankrupt. <laughs> When I was a kid, my physics teacher, Mr. Philby, had a Saab Sonnet, and it was a two-stroke engine. It had to mix oil with the gas because it was a two-stroker. That thing could run forever. A little bit of thing, ing, 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 ing. you could hear it coming down the road. Saab got too far into technology. That was a 2.3-liter four-banger in line, turbocharged, and I had caution with those. They had nothing but headaches. They're just endless nightmares as they age. If I used one, hey, you can get those things dirt cheap today. Now, getting parts for them, a lot of are going to be expensive hassle, but if you want one as a toy and you know people in Sweden or you get connections in Sweden, you can still get parts for the stupid things. But don't ever buy one. I think it's going to be a reliable used car. <laughs> Jay does anything 765. Gee, Jay does anything, huh? <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that to the public. Hey, Scotty, what's your opinion on a 68 Mercury Coogler? Do you have any experience with them? 
Yeah, I worked on one a few months ago. Guy inherited it from his father. They're great cars, you know. They're old-fashioned, you know. Their suspension is funky, and they go like stink. Big, giant engines, you know, the big block V8. But their brakes, uh, they're a little on the weak side, you know. <laughs> I'd upgrade them if I was going to get one. I'd put four-wheel discs on them if I was going to drive something like that serious long-term. But they're interesting cars, and, you know, not that many people keep Mercury's as collector's items. So you'd have a relatively unique vehicle if uh, it was in decent shape and hadn't been wrapped around a tree. Or if you live up north and the frame is all rotten, if you see the frames rotten, walk away. My customers won. It had a real solid frame because it lived its whole life in, in Texas, so it didn't have any salt, ice stuff rotting it away. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.